it's been a long, long time coming. Busy job, young family, things just kept getting in the way. 2020 was an absolute disaster anyway, but I'm finally back out on the banks shooting an episode of Urban Banks and it feels great. Rocked up at this spot last night around one o'clock in the morning, scopes were out by two o'clock and it is the mighty River Thames. For me, it's really the pinnacle of the, the urban London fishing scene. In fact, it's probably the pinnacle of the UK urban fishing scene. To catch a fish from this mega river, it would be a dream come true for me. However, tipping up and just putting the rods out for five hours, it's really never gonna be the one. You've got to invest a lot of time, a lot of effort, pre-bait, find the fish. But it was a cool night and it was nice to wake up already in the city. For now though, I'm gonna get these rods reeled in, get changed, get some shorts on, because it's gonna be super warm today, even though it's the middle of September. And I'm about to head off now on a five day adventure around London, fishing a whole load of different types of venues, meeting loads of cool people along the way. Yeah, buzzing. This is London Urban Banks part two. Can you please make a note that this is illegal fishing? It's just horrendous. Urban Banks. I'm on a mission. Come on. After leaving the mighty River Thames, my next stop was a stretcher canal. I walked for miles up and down trying to find signs of fish, which was incredibly difficult due to the almost complete covering of floating duckweed. Like a lot of urban canals, I knew it would be low stocked, so finding the fish was a necessity. After a night of very little sleep and hours of searching to no avail, I decided to take a break and meet up with the incredibly talented musician, JP Cooper, to chat about his experiences with urban fishing. My thing was, so growing up in Man North Manchester, my first experience was Rochdale Canal. Okay, so we're also quite urban there. Yeah, a mate of mine, um, his parents had a small farm, I could backed off onto the canal. Yeah. And we used to look over the edge and you could see, I can remember there was like, it was probably a road sign or something down there that was white. Standard. So you could see the fish. <laughs> and we used to look at the fish in there. And I don't know how, maybe we found some line with a hook on it on the end of the thing, dug up some worms and just, just like that. Catch, catching these perch <laughs> and instantly I was like Hooked. I need to do more of this stuff yeah. yeah so for years fishing on the canal um, and never really do much more you know it was a bit bit ropey like where we were fishing was it rough stuff, so. or was it like anywhere yeah, wrong day just, wrong yeah I mean I think back then it, I can remember it was just kids were bored yeah so if there was a bunch of lads and you go down there's a small group of lads fishing and you're going to have you some go. banter yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is it then? Like, is it just being on your own? Is it just having a bit of peace and quiet oh, after a busy it. day? I think it's just the awakening that kid, yeah. that that same. Yeah. You know, when I was on the, on the canal, looking at that roadside, yeah. watching them ghost it's, over it's, it's, it. It's like there's this other world, like what's in there, you know, and the unknown of it. That's why I, I prefer places. That, I know it seems silly, but I prefer the canal to a stock pond because yeah. you don't really know what's in there. Yeah. Um, and at least if you do, like, they're hard to come by. The thing is, right, so with the kind of work that I do... You were my September song, summer lasted too long. Up until, you know, now, it's been just non-stop and you're constantly go, 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 go. And I've tried meditation, I've tried, you know, all these things, and that's... Fishing for me is the closest thing to meditation, like, you know, I can sit there, I, I can do nothing without feeling guilty about doing nothing because yeah, yeah, I'm doing yeah, something yeah. and um, without just getting bored. Yeah. So it's like one of those things that I can, I can sit down and I can just, it is, it's like, it's like medicine. After one last walk along the canal, but again finding nothing, I decided to do my second night at the end of the stretch on a basin that looked as promising as anywhere I'd seen. After a bite to eat and some rig prep, I was back on the water ready to get the rods out for the night. I'd had a cast around and the bottom was relatively firm, 
so I opted to fish with small solid bags. Inside, armor link twister slip these and a cultured hook bait, filling the bag up with a mix of flake and some whole boilies. I wouldn't say I'm surprised because we just didn't find any fish. But that's fishing, you know, it's in with a chance. I felt the rods went down nicely, got a good drop on all three. Uh, sort of really sat it out this morning, a lot longer than I'd planned, but I've been picked up a few times now by the Tufties and stuff, and it's definitely time to call it a day here. Which is a shame, because it's a really cool spot. Just not sure how many carp might be present in the area. So I'm going to head off now to somewhere where I know there are a few more carp. I've actually been to this venue a couple of times in the past myself. A stunning piece of river running through the centre of London. A real diverse mix of species present and it allows me to not take all this gear with me. I can just grab my sawn off and go and have a bit of an adventure for the day. But first off, definitely needed morning coffee. I'm going to get these rods in, packed up, get on the road. After finding no signs of carp in the main stretch of river, I moved further downstream and found a small group of fish in a mill pool directly below a block of flats. Setting up a two pound scope sawn off, 10 pound zig flow and a size five claw, I started feeding bread and managed to get a few of the carp cautiously slurping the odd bit down. Wow, even after all these years of running around chasing and stalking fish, the buzz doesn't wear off. My heart's been going, I've been shaking. They're not big car, but it doesn't matter. It really gives me the greatest feeling sight fishing for these fish. What a buzz. It's actually a fish I've caught before. A uh, real character. And as a result of that, I'm gonna stay down here, slip the hook out, and carry on the adventure. What a mega character from a very unique London river. I mentioned earlier, it's very much like a chalk stream, and it is a special place for sure. I'm not entirely sure if you're allowed to fish this particular area, but I think as long as you come and go nice and quietly, respect the locals, and look after the fish, more often than not, people don't mind. And I've had a lovely chat with some of the people in the flats behind me this morning. Got a mega fish, I'm gonna have a little wander further upstream now. See what else we can find. I can't keep this lie up anymore. Let's not pretend. I left the river and headed across London to meet good friend Chris, where we would spend the evening and night fishing a really cool marina, right in front of some of the city's high rises. Now this is more like it, a little bit of luxurious London urban fishing. As always, first job was a couple of laps around the marina to search for fish. I only found the one, but it was lurking beneath some floating debris and it looked like there could be a chance. I grabbed the utility skim, out came the sauna for again, and I carefully lowered a bit of bread into the zone.
Not gonna lie, still burnt a little bit about the loss of that small common earlier. But yeah, what a place. I had a big walk around, checked out the sort of other basins and stuff, but I saw nothing else whatsoever. I think it's just too hot for them and they're tucked up underneath these boats. Yeah, all sorted now though, rods are prepared. Little sawn offs, three pound test curve, 20 pound bullet monarchs. If I am lucky enough to hook one, I want some gear to land them. And yeah, I've kept the approaches very, very similar. Lengths of cling on leader, drop off in lines, and then two very, very short hook lengths. And that's because everything's been packed up inside a solid bag. But the hook baits are different. One of them features a Scopex squid cultured hook bait on a slip D arrangement, and the other one's a 15 mil citrus pop up. The squid cultured hook bait, I've got loads of flake in the bag and a few whole squid boilies. And then with the citrus pop up, I've actually gone down the route of using liquidized bread, because I'm sure these fish get plenty of free food thrown over off the side of the boats from the boat owners. I had a cast around beforehand and it's very deep just off the back of these jetties, probably five, six metres deep, which means utilising a solid bag, I've had to double bag it to make sure I can get that rig all the way down to the bottom before the bags dissolve. I'm going to get the rods chucked out now and I'm really looking forward to chilling out tonight. No stress, carefree environment, there's a Nando's around the corner and I can have some quality time catching up with Chris. You never know, what a backdrop, how cool would it be to catch a cart from here. Unfortunately, we woke to another night of no fish. The location and company had been bang on, but the fishing was proving to be really tricky. Chris and I decided to pack up and make our way to a park lake that he'd fished as a young lad in the hope that this might bring us some action. Ocean outside, clouds that are falling. Can we to shut out the birds? Wait till the morning. And another one out here. That all coloured, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just itching to, to drift a few floaters and risers and, and watch them take and stuff. That would be my ideal day. I'd really enjoy that, to be fair. See if we can get something going in the upper layers. What are you going to do, jump on the bottom now? I think just start off with, yeah, like if I start on the bottom yeah. and then you obviously fish eggs and on the surface and then if one of them's working, then we can just, just switch over yeah. to the tactics, can't we? It only takes four or five seconds when we're bound to fold. Yes, sinking on swimming, but the good I do in the afterglow. But I said, I want to go with you, I want to go with you, and I'm all just like. With Chris targeting the bottom, I opted for a different approach and concentrated on the upper layers. I knocked up a mix of slicker floaters and riser pellets that I glazed up with the Scopic Squid liquid bait soap. The plan was to fish foam on zig screws positioned just underneath the surface and try and nick a bite that way. Morning. Yeah, so I brought Alan down today because I know obviously he loves his urban fishing. It's been well documented. Um, and we're right in the middle of South East London here. So I've started off, I'm going to fish on the bottom. It's quite warm today, but I've started off just sort of little trim down pop-ups with just a little bit of hemp and corn over the top, just bits and pieces. They're not huge fish in here, so sort of just a small bait and just try and attempt to bite, really. So yeah, we've just come down, literally, there's a reed line opposite that looked really good. Uh, we walked past, see a few signs, like a bit of stirring up and that. And uh, I thought it was good just to get the rods on and have a quick go. Rod's been out probably 10, 20 minutes and it's just absolutely melted off. And this one's pulling pretty hard to be honest. Hopefully it's one of the better ones in here. And hopefully we get it in the net. I think it just pinged off then. Come on. Yes. I'm happy about that, mate. <laughs> It's just had an absolute banger. The lad's behind us, or matey just behind us, he's the sort of secretary of the fishing club. He's got two fish on. The lad further up from him, he's just had a fish. Fair play to him, got snagged up in the trees. He's gone round on his little scooter and that, got it out. What a morning, big up. Yeah, no, it's been lovely times, mate, especially it was tough last night, wasn't it, so. Yeah, it's tricky night, good night, though. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. We had a good crack with the lads over there, didn't we? But uh, 
Yeah, it didn't take long to grab this one either, did it? No, it's lovely yeah. times, mate. It's an absolute carnage up here <laughs> kicking off, boys. <laughs> Go on, the lads. So off the bottom or off pop yeah, up? Yeah, mate, yeah, just on a little trim down the um, scope pit squid pop up. Yeah, literally fish like an inch off the bottom, just off the hook, really, sort of. So yeah, low line, it's quite silty out there, isn't it? So I didn't want anything too blatant. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give it another hour, tops on the zigs, and then definitely zip them in and put a bottom bait on, or, or a little citrus pop up or something. Hello, bruv, you all right? Lovely one, isn't it? He got his out, did he, of the bush? Yes, yes. Right, hectic spell around lunchtime. Chris caught on mega, mega common. I, on the other hand, nothing at all on the zigs. I've carried on putting the sort of bread cloud out there with a the dot spot, but I've dropped them down onto the bottom now. Short sort of helicopter setups with little Ronnie rigs with sort of whittled down citrus pop-ups on, little tiny bread sticks. Fingers crossed to get a bite that way, but it is that time of the day. Nothing's really happening anywhere around the lake. However, Got a seriously cool dude turning up now, the one and only Shabba. Gonna have a chat with him. He's brought some boys down, they got their rods too. Gonna have a bit of a fish up this afternoon and hopefully, as it cools down a little bit, because it has got a bit hot now, there'll be a few more bites on the cards. Here he is. My guy, yeah. you all right? You all right, man? Yeah, sweet, man. You? Good. Walks in the swim. Yeah. Ding! I've caught nothing all day, bro, till you turned up. <laughs> literally nothing. Yeah, Dan, I've got to ask you. Yeah. Because literally, from when I was like, probably 14, 15, I've been listening to you on tape packs, bro. Like, yeah. And then all the raves I've been to, did you like, did you think like it's going to be a career or were you like, I, I want to be an MC and I'm going to make money from doing it and this is going to be my job forever? It's, it's a good question. Like, no, I didn't, I didn't like, my whole life was football. And then I got into a, an accident. I had a car accident. Like I got run over when I was about 14 um, and that pushed me out of football for like about a year. And that's when I got into the music. Like I started hanging around the radio stations. I got in there, started answering the phones, and then like, you know, just one Saturday, I just started picking up the mic and doing shout outs. And then when I went to school on the Monday, everyone was like, oh, I heard you on the radio. And it was like, you know, Shabba Burton. And it was like, oh my God. And yeah, so that, you know, I got a buzz from that. And then I got on a better agency in like 98. Um, I got onto like Urban, New Urban, which was like with Mickey Finn and them guys. And then I expanded from there. Look at that, yes, go on. Brother, you take it. You take it, bro. Go on. Man like Shabba, bro. Come on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Nice and guide. No more really now. Just guide him in, guide him in, guide him in, guide him in. Come on. <laughs> You could, you could, you could, I tell you, you couldn't have made that up, mate. You couldn't have scripted no, it, bro. Turned off, turned it on. You could not have. Like, look. That looks alright. Yeah. Yeah. There's a new PB. Yeah. 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 There's a new PB. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can say a new PB. Now we can weigh it. Come on, come on, Jake. Come on. So yeah, the passion is clearly there, like for the music and for the fishing. I, just like when I first found out you are an angler, also yeah. seen recently you started rods, reels and bass. Yeah. Is that because of Corona, you got more time or just because the love's as big as it's ever been for it? Yeah, I think honestly, a bit of, I mean, the whole Corona thing pushed everything, but the music industry has been very like, it's been a hard, it's been a hard place. You know yeah. what I mean? We've had things, we've had the whole, you know, lifestyle took, taken away from everyone. So everyone's on a bit of a depressive one. Yeah. So it's like the fishing thing, yeah. like. I'm not passionate about nothing else, you know, fishing, football, music. You know, I love watching football, but I'm not yeah. going to be a professional football. I'm not going to make a, a living out of football now, yeah. you know, so... A bit like me with a raving. Oh, I I'll go raving because yeah. I'm never going to be an yeah, MC or a DJ. So I you understand. still love it. You I still love it. Mix. I love it. So love it's it. like the fishing thing for me. So when I started Rod Rules on Bass, I needed something there to get my teeth into. Good for and you, man. Like it's come, it's like God's almost just said to me, yeah, just do this, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or somebody, I don't know, like yeah. some bearer of the light, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we said, I've got to start off this page. And we started off and then people started posting it in. And then we started following things, tagging things. And all of a sudden, like with, with when we're going fishing, this is where the, where the buzz is at online yeah. and things like that. Because people see you fishing and they, they, they know this is not no, 
one off. The, you know, we're yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah. We're doing it. So we want to be a part of it. And yeah. how do we, you know, just join the group? You know, that's how we've done it. And then yeah. now it's kind of just like expanding, and every day it's growing. And obviously fishing with the likes of yourself, and and everyone's got some sort of passion in their life and obviously fishing is your main passion yeah. and music is mine but yeah. I'm just glad to be a part of something that keeps me happy as well yeah. do you know what I mean that's I think the main that's really thing. important it's the Happiness. most important thing bruv in yeah. life because yeah. you could be in a bad place in life and still be and um, find things that, to make you happy and yeah. you can become happy yeah. by finding them things and it makes what it me is. happy man fishing bruv, look makes at that. Look, me look, 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 look at, at that. all of us that. that's what I'm saying like, <laughs> look at that it's like I'm buzzing you should we get even, out and have a look yeah let's get out the arms of the neck down, roll it up nicely like this, two hands, and then we we'll just lift it out and carry him over. How about that? Midway through an interview, little thick sig rig, just fished about a foot and a half off the bottom, 12 mil squid pop up, and Shab has got a bagged one, bro! And a mega one, too. Go on. <laughs> them Go carp, on. them Go carp, on. them carp. <laughs> them carp, them carp. <laughs> Catchy, yeah. yeah, really catchy, really bro, catchy. really catchy. Chris and one of the local lads had managed to bag another fish each, so we all gathered round for a big group photo to finish off a lovely day. Well, I've had a proper awesome day down the park with all the lads. Come on! Oh, well done, lads. Mega. Absolutely mega. So, boys, really nice to meet you. See you later. And you, bro, oh, safe, bro. The Keep them. Really That's a gift. Really well done. Yeah. Smashed it. See you later, bro. Bye bye. See you later, brother. Today has been a proper Urban Banks day. Down the local park lake, met all the locals, both fishermen and non fishermen. And of course, Shabba, Endo, and Tans turned up, which was super cool. For the rod to rattle off in the middle of the interview, yeah, buzzing. This is what I love probably the most about the urban fishing, coming into these kind of environments and meeting with people that I haven't met before and just generally having a lovely time. For now though, it's back on the road, probably gonna go and check out the Regents Canal, have a little walk along that. And if that doesn't throw up any fish or any signs of fish, do you know what? I don't know what I'm gonna do tonight yet, but there's so much option in London, I'm sure we'll find somewhere really cool to drop on for the night. This is our time. They gonna feel us shine. As the dawn brings the world wings, I catch you in my Nothing can touch where we've been tonight. As the sun moves across you, standing in a half light. We go home, what we felt tonight in a half light. Hi, mate. Another long day. I'm definitely getting too old for this. Uh, left the park lake, went and checked out another sort of basin, then been up and down the canal with a bright head torch. I really like doing it. It's a, it's a great way of finding them in the hours of darkness, but just like the canal a couple of nights ago, the duckweed was a major problem. And as much as I was clear, clearing areas with my hand and stuff, I just never stumbled across any fish. So I've decided to come down to another one of London's basins. But I've brought someone along with me. We met JP Cooper, legend. We met Shabba today, absolute legend. But this young man here, big up Jacob, he is a true Don. He's a, you know, we'll talk about him more properly tomorrow on that, bro. But he's coming to London from up in Cheshire. We met a few years ago now. Four years ago. Four years. And um, he's really made a mark on the scene. He's caught some incredible fish. And I'm really looking forward to two full days with this young man no checking out. No pressure, bro. <laughs> We're just fishing in the city. Uh, two full days uh, going on a real mad one, bruv. But oh, for mate. now, can we get some rods out? Definitely. Uh, he's going to bring me some luck. I know I it. He's going to bring so. me some good I bloody luck. hope so. Come on, let's go fishing, let's bruv. Go, Come on. <laughs> Can't you see? I saw the moon in your eyes. 
he's got two rods out. I haven't got a single rod out yet. That's a big one for here. No, seriously. It's a real good No, that's a big one. That's a fucking big one. <laughs> Literally, I've never had a 20 out of here. That's well over 20 pounds. I've never had a 20 out of so it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Do not. See this, there's yeah, no... Big, oh, there's big comment, big comment. Go on. Go on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no Absolute way. madness. 30 seconds the one was out. I think it's my bait. Yeah, we can't you have done it. Oh, that's a proper one, mate. That's a 20 pound one. Get it. Yeah. Real good at Honestly, yeah. there, there must be like one in 50 calf is a 20 pounder. After seeing Jacob catch a mega one super quickly, I really needed to get some rigs in the water myself. I cast my lead to the opposite bank and then walked around and attached the Ronnie Claw rigs. This allowed me to accurately position the rig close to the wall, which I believe the carp would patrol along, as well as accurately and discreetly bait over the top. Mega one. You can tell the biggins don't get caught in here, they're all immaculate. <laughs> Ridiculous, mate. Well, so uh, incredible. <laughs> well, I've fished here for the last four or five years. I've caught a lot of carp out of here. And I have to say, to catch a 20 pounder as a. Uh, in minutes? Is, in, about, in minutes? In about two minutes is literally. A perfect start, to be fair. Now, as you know, I came here two years ago. I also caught a really nice common, but it was this big. <laughs> and this is definitely the great, great, great grandmother. There's a lot of uh, carp in here, and uh, I don't think I've ever had a 20. So this is my first 20, first cast. Alan literally just walked round, flicked a few baits over the top of me casting. It's about 25 foot, little shelf in the middle, about 10, 12 foot. Some carp, bro. Yep. Clearly feeding. Really mega. Sick. Hopefully a few more in the night. Off you go, girl. Get in. Get in, the boy. What an awesome night. Finally got amongst a few fish. It was so cool to get down here and hook up with Jacob. Yeah, known him for a long, long time, but it's our first proper session out together. And for him to catch a, a 20 pounder from here, within minutes of putting a rod out, yeah, just super, super cool. Um, the venue is a basin, and I've actually fished it before on the previous Urban Banks London episode. However, at that point, there was a major algae bloom with Alfie Russell. We only give it two or three hours and I did catch just a very, very small common. So to go through the night and catch a, a couple more myself, substantially larger. Uh, Jacob caught another couple as well. Um, yeah, it was really, really good. There wasn't a lot of sleep going on. Jacob was up most of the night. I only managed to nick two or three hours. I actually had a bit of a lion this morning, but was rudely awoken by an R3 screaming. And yeah, I was into a much better fish. I knew straight away, you know, the three pound sawn off was really bending. I was struggling to control it. Unfortunately, it did wrap itself up round the buoy and I just didn't want to pull for a break. So I decided to run all the way down to the bottom of the basin here, around the other bank, out onto this sort of island area to try and get a different angle on it. But by that point, it sort of had wrapped itself up around it. I thought it was all over, but I slowly started to actually move the buoy in, really surprisingly, because there's a huge weight down at the bottom of it. And I could see the fish just there. So between Dan and I, we carefully got down and managed to scoop it up in the net. And yeah, I was proper buzzing. And that's a real testament to the bullet mono, you know, to be able to pull a buoy like that in with a huge weight on the bottom. It's a mega one, got it in the net. I'm gonna get it out now and have a quick picture before getting on the road again for another day of action-packed adventure. 
Mega bro. <laughs> Well, after Jacob had that real good one last night, I wasn't sure there was going to be any more of the better ones on the cards, but yeah, I've gone and had one of the old ones. <sighs> Who knows how long it's lived in here, but it's certainly a character and a real mega way to end. Slip D, cultured hook bait, lowered off the edge over there. Yeah, proper made up with this one. Time to get on the road now. Jacob's going to show us exactly how he gets around in a London tackling these kind of venues. And it certainly isn't with a car in built up rush hour traffic. I'm really looking forward to it. We left the basin and headed to the aquarium shop where Jacob works, grab a few bits of TT we needed. It was then a quick lunch, some street performances from Jacob, before heading off to another park lake via the underground to make getting across the city that little bit easier. He's a boy, he's a boy! You get a donut. So we've arrived at the Park Lake. A park lake I've actually not fished myself. I thought it'd be really good for me and Alan to come somewhere that we've both not fished before, somewhere that we can both discover if you like. We've walked around it twice, we've seen a few fish. Um, yeah, it looks really good to be fair. It's, it's busy as most park lakes are in London, but we've got a few hours at least and the fish are showing. So I think we're gonna chuck a couple of boilies out, flick a few pop-ups out and uh, fingers crossed we can have a quick bite. My DJ, turn up the audio. After spending all afternoon at the park lake with yet again no success, we packed up and made our way across London to another park where we would do the night. Unlike the previous lake, Jacob had done a fair bit of time on this particular one and was really hopeful it would bring us a carp or two. You know we switch it up, big vibes lift it up, DJ mix it up, hotline ring it up. Boxy like a Dan Gargan, no big no pardon, cook up like a Dan, from not to London, we move and pam pam, only deal with Dan Tam, tonight we're on one, tonight we're on one, one two selector, who's on the mic causing danger, who's on mic around the sector, shut down festival arena, bad boy behaviour, quick race up making the paper, come true shock a man like taser, come true put the plant to paper. Later we'll be creator, go and get to shape up, go on to the river, make me paper. Yo, me I forget me care cup, me like me girl natural, them no need no makeup, don't need no makeup. Contour, bonjour, on tour, last tune, encore, once more, big tour, last horse, highlight, concord, so boss, the skank, down low, king dank, step in the dance, put up your hands, we make them skank, so, grab a buckle, boss it up. Still fresh as a daisy, he says. I'm more like a wilted, dying weed that's had no water or sunlight, just locked in a dark cupboard somewhere. In this case, a hide. To be fair, I'm a bit thirsty. My mouth is so dry. Hungry. No dinner last night. No dinner. No water. Did catch up. So that's good news. Yeah, we better get going. Last 24 hours now. It's going to come to the end of our time here in London. Last night was sick, um, even though we didn't get here till sort of 11 o'clock last night. Rods went out at kind of a reasonable hour, probably half 12, something like that. Yeah, failed on the ordering of the takeaway front, but we'll make up for that with breakfast this morning. But for now, we're going to get these fish out. Get on the road one more time.
Hello. <laughs> Well, after a difficult day yesterday, I was really hopeful that we were gonna catch last night. We rocked up in the dark, flicked a few choddies out and a few pop-ups, really shallow water, so just a handful of bait over the top. And uh, safe to say, it was definitely a successful night. I think I caught four fish, a few of the smaller ones I let go. And this is the uh, best of the bunch, if you like. Really made up, but to be honest, I'm hungry, thirsty and uh, in need of a shower so i think we're going to pack up go and get some breakfast and head to my uh, house and then uh, do the final night so uh, yeah wicked stuff let's get them back Well, Jacob said we were going to his, his being a houseboat. What a young man who loves his urban fishing wouldn't want to live in a place like this. It's a dream, bro. Definitely. It is actually the dream. Incredible. Definitely. Well, this is the dream, bro. Are you happy? Definitely. When I, when I first moved to London, like I was so like set on performing, like fishing was just a hobby, something I loved to do, which yeah. I'd done from a young age. I didn't even bring any gear with me. I didn't know you could even fish in London. I looked at Was the... it a big shock to you when you got here and started walking around seeing carp <coughs> in the docks and the No, I didn't. I you actually didn't no, start I didn't. Because okay. where where my college was was really central. Yeah. Like near the shop, Angel, yeah. and the only canal nearby was Regent's really, Canal. Yeah, yeah. And it's like very like barren in comparison to the like the northern canals where you've got little fry. I jump in. Don't know, I know it. Spent a few hours walking up and down that over the last couple of days. <laughs> so yeah, like, as you know, like it's just not like there's really nice carp low in stock. there. Yeah, but really low stock. So yeah. when I looked at it, it was like I saw nothing. I thought this is terrible. And it wasn't until I think it was summer at the end of my second year, I had one year left and I was watching like War from Stowe videos and Park Lake videos, some yeah. of the Nash TV old yeah. stuff and I was just like, there is fishing. I need to get my rods down here. And I, and I started getting the buzz back. And then in third year of college, we did like agent showcases where we we're only in one or two days a week. Yeah. And that's when I started doing actual Had nights. Time. Yeah, and I started like putting bait in and I, I was catching like really nice fish, like 20 pounders, which for me, coming from up north, like a 20 pounder out the canal there would have been the biggest fish in the canal. But yeah, like landing like a West End job, being able to do that and then still have time to fish would be like the dream. Oh, I've got every faith in you. I, I bet you, so. you'll make it happen. You I will. So. You're that really way do. inclined, bruv. You see something, you want it, whether that's the tricky fish out of the Regent's Canal or in this kit case, you know, to one day be in one of these big West End shows. I'd love to come and see her. I'll get you a ticket. Cheering. <laughs> Jacob, I know him. I know him. <laughs> then we go to the canal after. Yeah. For the angler that can embrace this urban scene, London's one hell of a playground. Yeah. You know, the Thames, the, the rivers, the canals, the park lakes, the basins. I was with Chris a couple of days ago. He grew up in London, very yeah. young he fished the park lakes, but now he does everything he can to get Away out. Away from it. Of course, bro, get out of that environment. He wants the solitude, the peace and quiet, you know, big fish on syndicates and stuff. Whereas you're the polar opposite. You're thriving in this environment. Do you, can you see that? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, I mean, Fishing anywhere, like... It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I could go here... But or, why do you love this? Ever since I first... Because I never 
it was like a whole different world to me when I first came in. It was that it was that complete change of no fishing for for like a, a period of years, yeah. like obviously bits and bobs, to then realizing how like that there were so many really special, special fish, I think is not just word. fish, yeah, special yeah, yeah. fish. Because obviously yeah. back at home, I wasn't, I didn't have a car. My parents didn't drive me to syndicates. I was only young, yeah. like thirteen. So local I was catch, venue, yeah, and... catching little like stock pond fish. Whereas if you come into here, catching like started off catching like twenty pound really dark fish, and it was just like like everything around you is the polar opposite of what you're doing. Yeah. Like it, you, but still really yeah, special. Yeah, you take it, you'd like, you, you're, like you've got people walking past with suitcases. It's like every time you catch a fish in London without fail, how cool is, is this morning? Here? How cool is this morning, though? Literally, All the dog walkers people are walking past, yeah, and they're like, oh, I really? love that. That's why I love exactly. it. Exactly. They're like, really fishing here, and every like, no matter where you go in London, that's what people say, and that's how I felt, even as an angler. Like, really, yeah. that's in there. So and it's just like your, your yeah. eyes start opening, and, and then you see there's other venues and there's this and there's that, and of course people, other people fish there, but the amount of like effort and passion you need, I feel, to actually properly fish there, like you can rock. Oh up. mate, I watch the Insta stories. Like you're out on a tube every night with untold backpacks full of bait, and you're pre baiting, and yeah, I don't you know. know that's why you know I sat here before we started this, and I flicked through that photo album, bruv, and it is. Really impressive. Okay. There's one thing scrolling through someone's Instagram wall, do you know what I mean, and you get a glimpse of it, but when you sit there with a coffee and you flick through and you look at what you've caught in London, it's one hell of an album, bruv. Like, really, really impressive. And would you believe it? This is incredible, but this isn't your only boat, is it? No. <laughs> Stacey, why did you buy two boats? <laughs> what was it? We just tipped that with a second tower. boat. Literally, lockdown was at home. Someone said, Oh, there's a boat for sale. I said, I'm bored. I needed a little something to work on. Bought a boat, told her she went absolutely mental. So, so like, what is it? You've progressed so much with the bank fishing, the basins, the docks, the park lakes, the not completed it, but you've caught a lot of those kind of target fish for those venues and you just want to spread your wings a bit further and the boat is the way of doing that? Exactly. I, I felt that there was something I was missing. Um, tactic wise yeah. if you like with the rivers and the canals and stuff in london and a yeah. lot of it is accessibility yeah. or safety not being yeah. able to fish on the banks you don't feel safe and i've yeah. seen a lot of really cool carp that i feel like i've not been able to catch because of not being able to fish yeah. there so i thought one day i need a boat it just happened before i'm I really I excited to. i've not done a lot of boat fishing certainly not in an urban environment like this so to get out with you for that final 24 hours i am properly buzzing it's been a difficult week for me week five days even you and I, you know, we really struggled yesterday. At, Park, yeah. yeah. But that's fishing, and I think if we can go out now for the last sort of 15, 20 hours. Catch a 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, a 20 pounder would anything absolutely special. be. Yeah, if we could just go out and put our heart and soul into this last, last little bit of the sort of session. Yeah. And just maybe catch one. Just maybe. It's not, it's, the thing is, it's not easy. I but know. It's doable. I know. I know. It's doable, and the good thing is, nine, nine out of ten are really special fish. So if we do manage to catch one, it'll, mate, it'll mate, be if, so good. if it's seven pounds, I'll take it. It would be one of the most special carp I've ever caught, you know. And I mean that. Let's go and try and find them. Get in nice and quietly. Get a rig on them, and just hope one pops along in the <laughs> night, and we get a bite. Yeah. Here we go. Should we go? Come on. Come bye on, bye, mate. Stacey. Lovely to meet you. See you, See you later. I'll be back bye tomorrow. Bye. up the boat and began preparing the rods. Jacob warned me about the number of bream present, 
so I opted for a snowman presentation with a last 24 mil cultured hook bait before heading out in a small inflatable to see if I could find some presentable areas in amongst the weed. two sawn offs out and it feels good to know that everything's perfect for me there's no greater feeling or seeing that rig down there everything laid out perfectly you see my hook bait see my lead see my cling on leader and if i hadn't have done that you'd feel like you're getting a drop all the time because it's just soft sediment on top of sort of firm ground but the reality is having been up and down underneath all these flame pontoons with the underwater camera there is everything down there from road cones to bottles to big plastic bags to sheets of corrugated iron and everything in between and yeah i'm gonna go to sleep tonight knowing that i'm fishing now whether the carp turn up or not that's another matter that's all part of it isn't it but at least i know i've done my bit in order to try and catch one and it's the last night it would be proper amazing if one of us two got a bite tonight It certainly wasn't for a lack of trying, but sadly it didn't happen last night. You on the other hand did have a lot of bites, didn't you? Smashed it, <laughs> green banks. Sadly, as we all know, all too well they don't count when you're making an urban carp fishing film. Um, I didn't get disturbed at all, the big rigs clearly um, kept them at bay, but a little bit despondent, a little bit disappointed. Yeah, definitely. But Jake, be real, man. The realities of just tipping up and catching yeah. one, it's not easy, I is knew, it? I knew it was gonna be tough and that's the good thing about fishing, I suppose. Like you've always got that air of mystery, and yeah. got, we can go. If again. you don't have the low points, you never appreciate those high exactly. points. You've got to get to work now. I really need to get back to to work and see my family, and basically just back to the real world, and not having the time of my life running around London with you, bro. Thank you so Thank much. You, mate. Cheers, really buddy. enjoyed it. It's been super cool. Been some mega places. It's proper made me chuckle on more than a few occasions, and I very much look forward to another adventure together Thank in you, the mate. future. I'll see you soon, Big yeah. ups, bro. Safe. So, Although Jacob and I didn't manage any carp at our final location, I'd had an amazing time with him, seeing the city from a different perspective, exploring some of London's waterways via boat, something I hadn't done before. I'm sure he's gonna go on and have some great adventures on the Kingfisher and catch some incredible fish along the way. My time in London had been so much fun, exploring new places, meeting new people, and of course seeing great mates again, which is all I ever really wish for in my angling. When I can do that somewhere urban, with the bright lights, the big backdrops, the interaction from the public, for me anyway, it really does add another exciting dimension to a fishing session. And long may that buzz continue.